Now, Elizabeth, mm. when or at what point, if you become aware of infidelity, Ooh. when do you insert yourself and make a, make an issue of it? This isn't your relationship. You're a third party observer. Ah, uh, when see, I was going to say if it was my relationship, I was, I was going to say something like, I'd like to play like the long game yeah, where right. you just ignore it until the they've cunt, been doing yes. it for six or seven years and then <laughs> it ends in heartbreak. That's that's my go-to strategy. Um, how sure are you? My example, uh, I'm asking in uh, closeness to you, proximity to you. For, so, uh, for an example, uh, uh, a neighbour, your next door neighbour, right. you're on first... Uh, name basis okay. with, but you haven't been in their house. You don't really have a friendship going on. You'll get their bins in if if you're not feeling nice. That's Gosh, kind of relationship. It's nicer than my neighbours. And you are aware that she is cheating with like multiple men. And we're sure. Husband. And, and you're, we're, sure. you're you've, sure. You've heard it, seen it from next door. Do what you know. Is that's, uh, oh, but it's not your really. You know, one. you don't know. Yeah. These people. Well, look, if it was a friend, I wouldn't hesitate. Like mm. if it was somebody who was in in my life regularly, I wouldn't hesitate. So it's I'd a probably yeah, there is a proximity the, thing to you, a closeness to. I'd probably. You. Oh, and this is hard because I actually had someone send me an anonymous letter about someone cheating on me sure, once, but yeah. I would probably go the anonymous letter. Root. Right. Root. Mm. Um, I I mean, it, it'd be difficult to make sure that that got into the right hands. Yes. Tricky. But I don't, like, y- you have to live next door to these people. So if you blow shit up, mm. they could literally blow shit up. You know yeah, that's right. Life, life could become very awkward. Yeah, and and yeah. Whereas years. if they lived, like, further away and it was, like, the parents of somebody that, that like you, like another school mom, and or you, something like that. And you like become that, aware of it, then, then you let it, then you let it go. That's I someone think else's there's, fight. There's very few situations, unless I had absolutely nothing to do with the person, that I wouldn't at least try and strategize how I could let them know. Right. Yeah. You want, you want to. You want to do the good thing or yeah. the right thing. You and know, that's like, the good thing to do. But even in a friendship case, you're going to get shot. Like if they end up getting back together, you're the friend that they're going to exclude from everything. And that's just something that I would deal with in order to let the person know, I think. Mm, interesting. But yes, the closer it gets to you, your friends, your family, yeah. the more likely you are the more that you are to yeah. to say, hey, I think uh, I think there's a problem here, buddy buddy boy, and yeah. someone who's having bought it. If yeah. it's a co-worker... Or I just tell the story on the podcast and hope that they listen. Yes, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. I, I, I'm kind of interested in knowing what's the furthest away you've gone, not distance, but from you, that your social life. That you've in a relationship that you've, that you've gone, uh, I think there's... Uh, a misfooting Write that here. down yeah, to post will, in the group later. I've got it, got it all, all primed and ready to go. Because I'm sure someone in the world has gone a, across a country to rap on someone's door and say, "Hey, I think your um, your husband's cheating." Or think? Can you imagine saying, "I, I only think. Yeah. I know your husband. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> You'd yeah. want more proof." Exactly. Hmm. Interesting one. Hello, one and hello all. Welcome to Ghosts of Boyfriends Past. I'm Tom Harris, and across from me is Liz Best. Hello. We um yeah we didn't have an episode last week. No, uh, we've been very poor. We've been Zane and I. People. Zane and I got COVID, and everything <laughs> has been <laughs> real <laughs> hard. <laughs> um. So this week, what we've decided to do, we've had some great, great stories written in to us recently. Yes, we'll do this at the top of the episode. People, uh, dear readers of our show, have identified that they've got a story that the world needs to hear. They're not comfortable coming on a uh, microphone themselves, or they're too far away to do so. Mm-hmm. So they've written it in, and yep. Elizabeth is going to get, give a dramatic reading. I am. And we'll pick apart the story for them without them in the studio. And look, because we kind of like the whole dynamic of three people on mic, we've decided that we want Uncle Zane, yeah, yes. our producer, <laughs> to come on today and have some comments and no doubt opinions. <laughs> Sometimes I doubt my qualifications to be on a podcast like this. But then in the opening there... My go-to in that situation would be to talk to the person who I found out was cheating. Actually, yes. And give them the opportunity to come clean first because other people know now. Yes. Right? Yeah. I don't know why I didn't go-to. think about that. And I just want rinse, to blow shit up. You can rinse your hands of all the, <laughs> yeah, of yeah. All the uh, responsibility. Just be like, if I know and I don't even know you, somebody else knows. Yeah, well, that's the thing. So. Like, my, my thing's radical honesty. So, like, if I know, I'm going to let them know that I know and yeah. say, look, you can tell them or I will. 
yeah. eventually. So, yeah. yeah. I love it. It's a noble position and kudos for you for being sort of readily brave enough to confront another human being like that. But not every not everyone in the in on the planet can do that. Can readily go, "Hey, I'm onto you, Buster no, Brown." No, I'm the I'll, I'll cut up a magazine and be like, "I know yeah, what you did." That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's coming from the privilege of a you know a a, a, a large burly white man. Yeah, yes, it's true. Uh, <laughs> it's true. I need to hide. <laughs> I am a very small, very small white woman. Interesting. Um, interesting. Interesting. So this week we had a story written in that was based off a question that was asked in the group. Fantastic. Um, so the original question was, "I have a question." It starts appropriately. Do you think that you can fall back in love with an ex that you spent six months getting over after they broke your heart 18 months ago and now want you back because they made a huge mistake? We were so deliriously happy while together for a year or so and we're in the process of buying a property. Kids got on really well and it was peachy and then very abruptly it wasn't. His call. Can you get it back? Mm. And the reason why this person ended up writing in a story is because somebody, <laughs> some lovely person in our group commented going, I know it's been two weeks since you posted this, but I just wanted to check in and see how you're going and if it's going well, which I thought was Gorge. It's very sweet, yes. Um, and, then, and then the person replied with, I think I might have to talk to Liz and Tom about it because it's a doozy. So we've been primed <laughs> and prepared for a doozy, oh, no. everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're going to call this person Kate. Kate. Uh, and there's a little bit of a preamble. Hey, Liz and Tom, have a read. This is the background to the question on the group therapy page. Maybe get a coffee or a wine because it's a long one. All right. So is this is this a uh, story of the breakup and potential getting back together, or is this the st- just the? Oh, this is the from the start. Okay, this so is... I guess going into it, Tom, like, what are your prejudices here? Like, do you think that that is? I think when we asked the question on the show, I said pretty un- and probably against type uh, on this show. I said it's pretty unlikely for two people that have broken up for probably good reasons to then sit, you know, time time goes by to then come back and uh, and get back together. And That's- very unlikely for me, I said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it can happen because sometimes it's a case of right person, wrong time. Mm. And Absolutely. then sometimes the time becomes right later I am a, on. I am a true I'm a, a, a But that's true without believer context. In, mm. Yeah. That's without knowing if this person is yeah, a douchebag. <laughs> so let's find out how many, right. how many times we hit this dump the button. Okay. Have we got it primed? We've got oh, it primed? There. Yeah, That's great. Cool, yeah. Okay. We met online in September 2019, four months post-marriage separation for both of us. We fell in love quickly and looking back, probably it was a dual rebound. We spent four amazing months getting to know each other and our kids and spent that Christmas and New Year's together deliriously happy. By the time that lockdown happened in March 2020, we were commuting backwards and forwards on a weekly basis. We lived an hour and a half away from each other. We broke lockdown rules by secretly driving to me in the dead of the well, night. I mean. So I'm blaming this person for our COVID. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kate, what have you done? <laughs> and we would spend the weeks that we didn't have our kids in lockdown bliss. Now, there are a number of different events that happened over the year, mostly to do with our children adjusting to new partners. And he was very focused on making a whole lot of money real quickly in his new business. See, already I'm like, he's a hustle bro. I hate him. Mm. Um. <laughs> well, well, that's the thing. Like, if he's just started a new business, there's a lot of work that goes into that. So that might be what they're referring to. Yeah. But if it is hustle bro mentality, like yes. there's a pandemic on, let's take advantage let's take, of that. Let's make a whole mm. lot of money real quickly. Mm. Yeah, that is. That, that yes, the, raises some flags. Mm. Having the expert. Having an, an expect, expectation to make a bucket load of money from a brand new, from a new business like quickly yes. is, is yeah it's yeah. the quickly bit but mm. yeah it meant that a lot of the time I put my needs last as I saw what he was doing and what he needed to for his own mental health this was definitely a behavioural hangover from my marriage. I was doing everything I could to be in his life, spending every kid-free weekend commuting to him, totally putting him first. Now that's like. Good supportive partnerships when you've been together mm-hmm. for a while. Like that's that's not 
red flaggy to me. Like that, as long as, as especially long as, if it is like a new relationship mm. and commuting has been the standard, and at that point you want to do that, mm. so it's not like they're demanding that it yeah. happens. Yeah. So yeah, that uh, that doesn't raise too many red flags, but you can see like this. <sighs> Knowing that it didn't work out kind of leads you to believe that maybe, yeah, this is the start of a bad habit. Mm. Mm. I think, mm. yeah, it's okay. It's great and wonderful thing to to be there in a relationship and to to work hard and go the miles. But if you're the only one doing it, then there's an imbalance and you're, getting, you're, pro- mm. you're being taken advantage of, etc. Because Kate did say that they were taking turns commuting, but now it is just Now Kate. it's her, mm. yes. It says, again, this was because he was so focused on his business and it was just easier for me to go to him. But we were blissfully happy. We never fought. We always had fun. The sex was amazing and adventurous and we really just loved spending time together. Now, yeah. fast forward. To November 2020. So this oh, has gone March to nice November. I'm sorry, we can't. That's not what this podcast does. <laughs> and out of the blue, he calls me one day and tells me he wants to break up. Just out of the blue. So you're like, Damn! Damn! Yeah, I mean, lunchtime, your, yep, your phone buzzes. Yep. By the way, hey, you're dumped. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm pressing that button because, like, if that's the way that they're going to break up with you, then that is. What else are they going to cut and That run? is like, enough that's reason to be like, okay. Uh, that means that I would want to break up with you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So cue hugely emotional phone calls, a really sad and lonely Christmas, although I had my three boys with me. I was heartbroken. I can remember FaceTiming with him on Christmas Day and just crying my eyes out, totally heart sick. His reasoning was that it was never going to work. We lived in different towns and neither of us had the capacity to move because of our children and he needed someone in his life 24-7. Mm. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. That to me, he needs. He wants a mummy wife. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I need, why does con- he I need, need constant someone? adult supervision? Yeah. I, I need someone in my life. Nothing about what she wants in yeah. her life. Anyway, rude. He still had a number of my things, including an electric garage door opener. Although mm. I asked him to courier them to me, he turned up at my place in early January. And we ended up having a really long conversation and decided to give it another go. Stop it! Correct. I pressed that because you told I did. me to. Yes, there I was did. direction, I stage direction. At yeah. this point, if he's the one saying, look, maybe what I said was incorrect and I am emotionally invested enough to admit okay, that, well, if that's what he's saying. Okay, this is, yeah. this is what he said. So she said, I was more in love with him than I had been with anyone ever and I really wanted it to work. He told me that he'd made a huge mistake and that he regretted being such a coward. This time we were talking about investing in property together. See, this is too fast. Mm. This is too fast. Investing in property together, joining our finances in some capacity and absolutely committing to the long term. We discussed getting engaged, but both of our exes had already done that with their new partners and neither of us wanted to rush to that part of our relationship. Five years was the goal. Okay, so here's where I have the problem. And I believe I said this when we discussed this last time. Mm. You have to make them earn back their place in your life you start for when you break up with someone and you get back together straight away and i have made this mistake and it was terminal it was bad yeah you start from square one again yes you don't start from we've been together for nine months and we're back to nine months of relationship this is square one because that person broke your trust and they now need to earn that trust back in a relationship anyway that's my soapbox Mm, yeah i look i agree i i think this story even sounds like they got to nine months, broke up, and then they jumped to twelve months. Yeah, mm. where well, this is what like I did. They had never broken up. My worst relationship, that the the one that we had Emma on to talk mm. about, we were together for four months. He dumped me in the middle of a mini break, and then when we got back together again, we moved in three weeks later. Like yeah, it's that's... too, it's it's too much, and it sets up a level of. Uh, behavior that you're okay with that will last for the entire relationship yeah. i yeah. think yeah it's like you was it's like you 
assume that when you're uh, when you've broken up and you are single again, it's like you're, you're it's like time served on on a, yeah. on a sentence. You're just attack you're uh, incorrectly tacking on that extra yeah. time. Yeah, yeah, because I've known them for this long. Yeah, anyway, and just because you yeah, over that time, you as an individual grew and experienced new things, but the relationship didn't. The relationship yeah. still still where it was. Yeah. So I'm in a position here where I'm dubious. I'm dubious too, and worried. Mm. But I had no. This is, it's not cataclysm level for me yet. I if could, he if he hadn't if you guys hadn't jumped so far forward into the relationship, I probably would be like, yeah, cool, because that's what I said in the group. Mm. I was like, make him date you again. Mm, absolutely, I think there's a rankle with at the very beginning of the story. They were after both of them had left marriages and after like four months found mm-hmm. each other. So mm-hmm. there's already an, a, a mm. quick, I don't know, a bolt out of the game. I also feel like there might be a little bit of competition as well with the exes who now are also already engaged. engaged. Yeah. Yes, a, a, an extra little kind yeah. of... That, you know... It's pressure. Hasn't, hasn't been focused on, but like mm. definitely uh, relationships are moving quickly around them. Yeah. So my 40th birthday was in January 2021 and we had a wonderful long lunch with beautiful family and friends under the trees in a local reserve. It was just the perfect day and the bubbles flowed. The next day, he was a bit distant and a bit weird with me and he wanted to leave straight after breakfast. I knew that something was up, but he would not talk to me about it. The next day on the phone, I basically had to drag it out of him and it turns out my younger sister and her partner had bailed him up at my party and told him that he was selfish for coming back into my life and that he really should leave me alone. He took this very much to heart and our amazing reconciliation was short-lived. Would you be upset with your sibling? Fuck yes. Uh, would you, Absolutely. Uh, that, that's not Talk to place. me about it. Yeah, yeah if, if, <laughs> if they hadn't said those exact same things to Kate, yeah. then yeah, that's totally yeah. out of line. Mm. By Easter, he'd become very distant and once again broke up with me over the phone after I asked him what was going on. It was a totally shit time for me. A major restructure had been announced at my work and my job wasn't safe. My ex-husband was having his engagement party that weekend and my boyfriend broke up with me. They say that shit things come in threes. Again, cue lots of tearful phone calls and an emotional roller coaster. I had a really close girlfriend living with me at the time and she was an amazing support. Shout out to, well, I'm going to use, um, oh, she said shout out to Jackie, so I'm going to use the real name. I was determined to properly get past him though, so I went into intensive therapy once a fortnight for nine months. Well right, yeah, done, that's you. Good. That's a good step. Ding, ding, Absolutely. Ding. We stuff. need an applause button, yeah. I think, <laughs> at some point. One day. <laughs> I did a lot of healing and personal growth and we managed to maintain something of a friendship, online at least. Now, so that was January. Now we're November 2021. Okay. He calls me out of the blue, wanting relationship advice on his new girlfriend. No. Never no. do that. No. <laughs> does anyone believe, yeah, does anyone this buy that for a second? This is the last person you ask yep. unless you are incredibly close with your ex as a friend. Yep. Like everyday contact and you can speak about your own relationship extemporaneously without any hard feelings you do not contact them about relationship advice no. yes my brain instantly goes to nefarious areas yeah. if you're getting yeah. in top yeah. contact with an ex yeah there's some there's something else you're looking to get out of it hmm. okay so kate gives him advice okay kate says Kate's a good person kate says yes. i tell him that my new mantra is if it's not a fuck yes then it's a fuck no you have to choose yourself over and over again and i tell him that i'm seeing someone else which is a whole other disaster story <laughs> <laughs> he seems to take this on board and decides to end it with the new girl because he wasn't in love with her. Fair enough, his prerogative. I'm pretty ambivalent to him now. My new guy had wholly captured my intention and the therapy was working. Yes. Congratulations so. on both accounts. March 2022. Mm. <laughs> it's always November and March. This guy's on a clock. Yeah. I'll say that. So March is the... Autumn, so March, yeah. <laughs> going into winter and then going into summer. <laughs> yeah, you want someone to cuddle with in winter and then you break up to have mm-hmm. hot guy summer. <laughs> I get a Facebook notification that he and the new girl are engaged. I flick him a message to say, wow, I'm surprised, but congratulations. He responds with a vague message about not believing everything you read. Ugh. The following month he calls and asks if he can come and see me. 
No! <laughs> Just no! a collective scream into the void, everybody. Well, okay, look. At this point... <laughs> Kate's feeling ambivalent towards him. So it's not like a love lawn situation. No. She's given him advice that he hasn't taken. And when she reached out, he said, look, it's not exactly what you might think. And then reaching out again, like I can see the logic yeah. and the emotional sort of, uh, the, emo- the emotional maturity that said this yeah. action is not horribly red flaggy yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand but still thing. knowing that something's going to happen you can you can feel that aura of red mm-hmm. flag arise mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm dubious <laughs> but super curious <laughs> he comes to visit me and proceeds to give me the same spiel from the first breakup he's sorry he never stopped loving me he made a big mistake etc etc He had proposed to his new girl for all the wrong reasons she wasn't the one and she was just a band-aid Ugh. I'm flattered and surprised but unsure how I feel now. Hence my asking the question in the group therapy Facebook page. So this was the point at which... Wait, so he was asking to get back with her then? I guess so. Or was it Nambi, Nambi Pambi, uncom- uncommittal either way, to trying to just sort well, out he, his Well, it be- seems like he said bet. that that girl wasn't the one. She was a Band-Aid to cure him from her Were is what it sounds still like. still engaged? Mm. Uh, at the time of this conversation. Mm. I don't know. That's really important information, I assume Kate. not, maybe. I don't know. Because if, if there's an announcement on on Facebook, she's uh, this X and Y are engaged, right? And then he says, hmm, not all that it seems. And then still uh, engaged messages, uh, gets yeah. in contact with our dear friend Kate and says, here's the spiel. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he had a foot in both camps. Anyway, so this was at the point which the question came through, can you get... Can you fall back in love with someone if you... So she'd moved on a little bit, had some good therapy, had some good growth. I tell him how I'm feeling, how I'm really unsure if we could ever get it back. But I agree to see him again as we do have a lot to talk about. He comes down the next weekend, we have dinner and talk, and I tell him all about how my therapy has really helped, Mm -hmm. how I've been going through a huge period of change and growth in my last 18 months, and we part ways, agreeing to keep talking and keep working through stuff to either get back together or not, which was super mature, I think. I agree. Yep. That is mature. Not jumping back into anything and looking at joining finances, etc. Yes, yes, exactly. Not looking at property together. We speak the following Thursday and make loose plans to see each other over the weekend. I come down with a migraine on the Friday night and message him to say, probably won't be able to catch up till Saturday afternoon when hopefully I'm feeling a bit better. No issues, he's not feeling great either. I message him on Saturday, no response, and he doesn't read the message. I message on Saturday night, same again. Okay, I think maybe he's busy or got other stuff going on or still sick, no big deal. I message on Sunday morning. He still hasn't read either of my messages, but I can see that he's been online. By this stage, I am irate. Mm. But I'm not going to let him know that I'm upset or that I want his attention. I go about my business, feelings hurt, but fine, that's that. Gets to Wednesday and my anger has built Oh, and Kate, what did you do? Built. A, a simmering <laughs> anger, yes, a bubbling. He still hasn't read my messages but has seen my instagram stories oh god that must be frustrating i haven't dated since i started doing instagram stories so i don't have that Mm. i message again and he ends up telling me that he saw that i was living my life really well and probably didn't need him um what the fuck she says question mark question mark question mark question mark Mm, rightfully so Cue a very heated exchange culminating in him saying, you're angry and I can't change it. I already did what I'd done. It's not enough, good enough answer, but that's my answer. Uh, and I haven't seen or spoken to him or messaged to him since. Congratulations. The and d- yeah. d- 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 50 days. I think we're all frustrated because it's a t- it feels like a time waste. It feels it parts well, manipulative. It, par- it parts it feels... Yeah, this guy's just manipulated all of us mm. because like all of his actions could have been explained with emotional maturity. Yes. Yep. But it is. I think it's just a classic case of cold feet. As yeah. soon as he got close to making a commitment, he was like, oh, this doesn't feel right, so I need to back off, and then did the exact same thing with another woman, it sounded yep. like. And then when it got to the same point, he was like, oh, this doesn't feel right. I liked what I had 
before this. Yes, and and he ran into a brick wall of uh, therapy and self betterment and and positivity and oh, going absolutely. forward, and then went fuck. I can't compete with. It. I'm not. I don't want to grow as a person. I can't. I can't bang my head Look. against that wall, so I'm out. Okay, so controversially, um, his last line talking about how he's she's living her life really well and probably didn't need him. That is a hundred percent true. Yeah. Like yes, yeah. yes yeah, you yeah, she yeah. You, like I'm hoping very astute that he actually realized in that point that he was a piece of shit and dragging her down all of this time. I don't want to give him the benefit of the doubt yes, because he's been a massive douchebag throughout this entire time. Like, like doing that thing, breadcrumbing, I think they call it, where you give someone little bits mm. enough to kind of keep them mm. following the trail until you decide what you want. See, I think he could have said that in a moment of realisation yeah. or he could have said that as part of the manipulation mm, going, that's like, how I, that's I, how I want it. you to need me. And yeah. Can, and, and oh, then, yes. So that you, of course. And so that Kate, you don't as need a woman, me. Oh, of course I need yeah, you. Would turn on that emotional yes. labour tap. Oh, wait. That's how I. <laughs> COVID has softened my brain. That's how, that's how I took that's... it upon reading Liz. Yeah, yeah. just totally. I took it the complete other way. Wow. That is a personality <laughs> mindfuck. That is not normally. I think, I think um, we've all met Kate, and Kate's a really good person, and we want it to. W- I think there's a chance that we want it to work out for Kate. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah, we're yeah. going, yeah, but. We there's... haven't literally met Kate, by the no. way. No. <laughs> but I think in but I think uh, but I think the the evidence is actually quite strong in the other direction, and that it's quite damning. Um, uh, I think Liz, yeah. So lessons. Okay, so there's one little line. P.S. I was momentarily sad, but actually, on reflection, I should never have entertained it again in the first place. Trust your gut, yep. which I think is Kate's lesson from this: is trust your gut. So if she had to ask the question, "Can you fall back in love again?" Mm. If she had to ask that question, she was already feeling really uncertain about it. Yes. I, well, I think uncertain means that... But, like, love is never... Mm. I don't think love is ever really some, something that you feel incredibly certain about mm. unless it is you're 100%... Deluded. Well, unless it's 100% <laughs> reciprocated and you're having that storybook moment mm. where you, you're you having the story where you're both 100% into each other and you just move forward on that line mm. and relationships very rarely happen like that but we always want every relationship to happen like that mm. and I yeah. think the power that the, the Kate's come out with now is like she needs to examine what she's bringing into a relationship and what is being brought into a relationship mm. therapy is a great step for doing that and it's like my my Suggestion, if they were still together at this very point now, would be like, I think maybe they should go to therapy together, together. Mm. Uh, and see yeah. if uh, if they can engage on that level rather than just like you make feel good, please be near. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think my big lesson from this is that therapy works. Yes. Um, that that seeing a therapist um, to work on yourself is so important because. Once you're healthy in yourself, you make better decisions. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. You you'll get something out of out of therapy if you can afi- uh, if you can afford it or find a good therapist. Um, I wonder uh, I wonder what the lady that he en- uh, got engaged to would think of this behavior behind the scenes. Just I as need a, just to as ask, an and I question. and I will and I will possibly um, message this person and ask whether the engagement was still on. Could be, when, yeah. when Could be good to get he that came information. back because wow, and um, and whether she knows anything about the engagement being ended or. But yeah, I'm super proud of Kate for not immediately jumping back into it yes that shows so much growth like not only did you not jump back into it at all but you didn't do the thing where you jump back into it and go a year into the future like way too fast but but interrogated it instead and i think that is that's really the 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 process for that kind of can you fall back in love with someone i was like you can but you need to figure out who you both are now and Mm -hmm. what has changed since you broke up yeah yeah yes uh my lesson is uh, Kate in her writing said, "Shit, things come in three. That's incorrect. <laughs> people, people say celebrities always die in three. No, uh, bad things happen, and we stop counting at the end of three, and the cycle continues. The cycle continues. And we start That's true. Again. Bad and start, things and always st- happen. Is the, so is the moral there is, of that story? <laughs> there is no like, oh, two bad things are happening. I'm going to prime myself for the third. No, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth. It just keeps it's going. It's also interesting that we don't count how uh, the the." I guess the lots that good things happen in. Yes, like good things don't happen in threes. Yeah, that's they just right. 
happen hey. every now and then. <laughs> or not. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, similarly, if two celebrities that you love die re- in, you know, in short, in short thing, the third one, like, oh, the third one's going, yes, and then the fourth, and then the fifth, and yeah, then we yeah, just yeah. keep... We just co- stop that's counting. Interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the same theory as it's always in the last place you look because you're yeah. not going to keep looking <laughs> after right. you've found that's it. Right. So bad things will happen uh, and you can't do anything to to curb it. Kate, thank <laughs> you so much for writing in and providing context. I think it's really great when we get questions in the group to kind of find out what happened. Um, and it's really nice to see that people in the group are actually invested in asking what happens. Really so. interesting story to come across our desk. Really good, good talking point. Interesting talking points. Important sort of areas to explore and clarify. And so, I definitely think that a lot of people are going to have this situation crop up, or have mm. had this situation crop up in their life, where an ex comes back and goes like, "Hey, I know I asked <laughs> this person to marry me, but uh, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but um, I think about- they call that. There's a word for that too. Zombieing, I think it is, where Zombie. someone comes like an ex comes back from the dead. It's like oh, okay. it's okay. like ghosts okay. of boyfriends' past yes, coming back up again. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you have a story and you don't want to sit and put your voice to it on mic, please write in. Even if you only dot point it, I can work with you to make it a fully fleshed out story. But Kate did a magnificent job of writing that in. It was very eloquent. Don't feel like you have to live up to Kate's standard because we take stories in all shapes and forms and my job as an editor and a journalist is to make them sing. That's right. So uh, we can help you. And we do more than these main long episodes. We have quickies. So if it's a paragraph, a paragraph of... Hey, you got uh, you went on one date and you got awkwardly dumped in the parking lot in and out yeah we have episodes designed <laughs> we for have these. quickies we in have, and out <laughs> <laughs> all right all right every <laughs> i'm 12 <laughs> <laughs> while i wrangle control of this giggling cut classroom uh thank you everyone for tuning in yet again you're very diligent coming back for us and uh getting your little fix of ghosts of boyfriends past we thank zane for coming on Yay! microphone uncle you're zane coming well down excellent wisdom as ever um i didn't have to fight too hard for the wholesomeness this time i feel like liz was on board until that very end where I was like, maybe it's manipulation. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. I like, I don't know. I, it was so funny because I was like against him for the whole thing. And then that last line, I was like, oh, maybe he's redeemed himself. This is why I suck at relationships <laughs> because I doubt them forever. And then they say one nice thing and I'm like, oh, they're reformed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It just does it pass the bullshit test? The sniff, you know, you got to be able to sniff. That, I lost sniff my that sense out. of smell during yeah, COVID, see, so COVID. I wouldn't know. It's COVID. <laughs> well, uh, thank you, everybody. Stay safe out there. And keep listening. Rate and review the show if you can. You know when to send your questions, your stories. Go to boyfriends past at gmail dot com. Elizabeth Best, any last words? Um, just trust your gut, and if you've got any questions, ask us. I guess. <laughs> La 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 la